What is going on today guys, Tom Cat here and today we are back in Forza Motorsport 6 and today we're going to be doing a circuit build of the 2012 Charger SRT8. Now a lot of people, you guys are probably wondering like why the hell would you build a circuit car out of a Charger SRT8? Well, the Charger SRT8 to me, it's kind of like I want to get this new series going where it's like very unlikely circuit cars. So you take a car that normally you would completely avoid for circuit racing situations, but we're going to take them and see if we can actually make this thing a beast on the track. So, in fact, I want to go back and see what kind of liveries we've got available. Of course, we're going to have our state trooper and our, you know, all of our police liveries, but... Oh, God, General Lee. Um, let's see. That one might be pretty cool. I'm, I'm not completely opposed to a police livery. I like that. Let's see. More and more police liveries. I actually kind of like this one. This one's kind of a nice two-tone, and it's got that little bit of red in it. I, I think that looks really good. I think it looks cool. So, the goal with this car is to, you know, lower it, build it, get it ready for the circuit, take it out to a circuit, and run it in rivals mode, and see how high up on the leaderboards we can actually go with something like this. Charger SR now, as far as... As far as the car goes on on the stamp from the standpoint of like of balance, it might be a little bit eh, well, let's say I'm not gonna say unbalanced, but I'm gonna say a little bit um, a little bit on the iffy side for a situation like this, but it starts out as a C500. So I'm thinking when all is said and done, we may end up with an A class car because I would kind of like to upgrade the power a little bit and I know I'm gonna upgrade the tires a good bit too, so it'll probably end up being, an A-Class car. If I can optimize it for A-Class, that would be optimal. Um, the thing is, I really don't see these on the leaderboard very often at all, and I'm, I'm sure there's a good reason for that. I mean, it's a, it's a massively heavy sedan muscle car, and, you know, that's not what you see most of the time at things like track days and stuff like that, but you know how we work around here. We like to be a little bit different than the, uh, than the normal crowd. We like to think outside of the box so to speak, and I feel like that's what we're doing with this car. So let's get that race diff in there. Did we do the... No, we didn't. We just need to race trans, because I know we did a clutch. Race transmission, see, we're already in A-class. We haven't even touched the power yet. Oh, come on. A little bit of menu lag going on. Just make sure we have the clutch. And for wheels and tires, for tires themselves, we're going to run race tires, and that puts us already almost up to the top of A-Class. So there's very little we may be able to actually do to the power. And we've got 245s in the front and 245s in the rear. Okay, so 245 square stock. Let's see. We could go up to a 275. Let's run the 275 in the front and a 3... Ooh, we don't need that wide. Um... 275 up front, 295 in the rear should be a nice little uh, nice little setup. It's not too much of a stagger to make it unbalanced or anything like that. Because when you're building a circuit car, you want to have a good balance um, of turn in and um, of, of turn in and a balance of grip and stuff like that. But the thing is, if you stagger too much, you'll get a lot of understeer unless you go ridiculous amounts of negative camber up front. So let's see for aero. Gonna definitely stick the Forza Arrow on there. I know it's gonna look a little ridiculous with that wing on the back, but I mean, we're building a circuit car. We're gonna we're building a dedicated circuit car out of a, a Charger. So there are things that are gonna look a little bit ridiculous, but it's all good. Intake. Let's see. That puts us at 480. Exhaust. That puts us at 496. So almost 500 horsepower and almost maxed out for A class. Let's see. A street flywheel. Hold on. Let me see if I can... Race oil and cooling. It adds a little bit of weight, but it also adds a good bit more power. Um, I would like to have the race flywheel... Like, I would prefer it more than a couple of other things. So we can actually go back to a street intake. Which brings our power back down a little bit, but we'll be able to rev out a whole lot quicker. So it'll help us out quite a bit in the long run. I'm going to slap on a quick tune, and then we're going to uh, do a little bit of a test run. Then we'll take it to uh, to uh, the rivals mode and see what it can actually do. We'll take it to the leaderboards. Now, I'm going to run 1.5 in the front and 1 degree in the rear. 
and I, I, th I feel like that's a nice baseline setup to work with. And then for the ride height, we're going to bring it all the way down. And cornering, we'll leave that alone for now. Brake balance, a general setup is 55% front and 105% uh, braking force or pressure. And for the diff, I'm going to bring it back to 70-30 because I feel like 70-30 is wor has worked for me really well in the past. Now, some muscle car guys run like a 70-60. So it just depends on what I guess you're going for. I'm going to run it at Watkins Glen. I like running time attack cars at Watkins Glen. Um, and, I, and yes, I am going to call it a time attack car. I mean, it's not a usual time attack car, but for all intents and purpose it, pur bleh, bleh, purposes, it is a time attack car. It's talking about, it's, it's funny, it's talking about drag tires, and I'm like, hmm, I should build some drag cars. But let's see how this thing, let's, let's see how it sounds, and then let's see how it does. Hooks up nicely. Break. You feel the weight. You feel the weight for sure. I mean, it is a heavy car. But that actually doesn't stop it from turning in pretty nicely, pretty predictably. I mean, you feel the you feel the mass of the car, but you don't feel this you don't feel like an overwhelming sense of like, wow, this shouldn't be here. It's more like it's not a sense of like this car shouldn't be out here. It's more a sense of like like I'm going to need to do a good bit of work if I'm if I want to make it fast. Come on. Oh, 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 oh dear. Oh. <laughs> Handles itself pretty well, though. And I, I feel like I'm glad that we kept it somewhat close to the stock power. Because since we kept it close to the stock power, we're not having to mess with a bunch of other, like, a bunch of other ridiculous stuff like, you know, constant oversteer and stuff like that. I mean, it'll kick the tail end out if you want it to, which it has just enough power to be a little bit squirrely at the back end, but it's not, you know, it's not going full drift car on you or anything like that. So I'm going to see what it can do on a flying lap. I'm sure it's not going to be anywhere close to like, say what my time attack GT86 would do on this track, but I'm curious to see what it would do in relation to other, you know, four door chargers. I say four door, you know, meaning modern chargers. Come on, come on, come on into third. Doesn't respond the best to trail braking. I mean, it's a little bit like, I don't know, the balance of the car doesn't seem to lend itself to trail braking really well. I didn't think it would, but eh, at the same time, it's just, it just, it's not that type of car. All right, flying lap. Let's see what you can do, or what we can do. And go. Banging off the rev limiter just a little bit. Trying to keep everything as composed as possible. Still flat on the throttle. It's 100% flat through there. Got a little squirrely at the back end, but nothing too bad, nothing too terrible. Coming up to the first chicane. Gonna take it in third, cut the rumble strip. Are you kidding? Oh man, didn't want to make that a dirty lap. Normally you can cut it that much and you'll be fine. That's the first time it's it's made that a dirty lap on me in a while. Oh, sh that was bad. That was bad wide. Go, 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 go! You have to feather the throttle a little bit. You have to feather the throttle a little bit mid-corner just to make sure it doesn't kind of catch you out suddenly. But it's definitely a predictable car. It's an easy car. It's actually a really easy car uh, to, to lap around a circuit. It's not... It's not frantic. I mean, I, my for example, my GT86 Turbo is fast, but it's frantic. You really have to be on your game if you're wanting to drive that car fast. And I feel like it's 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 kind of a muscle car versus tuner car thing in a way. Um, but it's also a naturally aspirated versus turbocharged kind of thing in a lot of ways too, because turbocharged cars you're always having to work to keep that boost up, and if you lose the boost. You're going to have to get spooled up again, especially if you're running a single turbo, because if you're running just a big single, it, it's it's going to be uh, it's, it's going to be a full-time job 
sometimes to keep that turbo spooled on the track, especially if you're in and out of some really slow sections. Come on, come on, let's make the next lap clean. Let's see, and break. Whoa, 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 whoa. We actually braked a little early. I'm surprised. I keep braking earlier than I actually have to in this car because I'm here thinking like, holy crap, I'm in a massive four-door, you know, charger. I feel like I need to brake insanely early and in, in, in a lot of ways I don't in a lot of ways I don't and I think that that's because in, in in a sense it's because of the braking bias that we changed and it's also obviously because of the race brakes that we upgraded to but woo getting a little squirrely under braking a little slower through there than I feel like we could have been but it's okay because we kept our lap clean just make sure we don't run wide right here get on the power Would have done us good to shift up to fourth. I wanted to see how far out I could run third. It banged off the rev limiter like six times, which is probably a good indication that we should shift there. Go, 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 go. Power up the hill. I think the biggest thing with this car is that in the grand scheme of things, I would say it's not bad. In comparison to other cars of its type, I would say it's great. So when you look at it from that kind of sense, you realize that it's like, on one hand, you're like, oh, okay, it's it's definitely not the fastest A-class time attack car by any means, but is it, you know, is it good for what it is? Is it good for, like, the other cars in its own little category within A-class? You know, four-door muscle cars? Yeah, it's fast for that. Go. Went way out. Way out. We're going to put down a 202. 202 is good. 202 is good. I mean, really. I, and I, I didn't realize that, that we went directly into I mean, we are in test drive mode. And I didn't realize it was going to start already comparing our target times. But and, and, and it's funny enough because with that fact, with that being said, we kind of don't have to go... We kind of don't have to go into, um, like, straight into Rivals mode. But, anyway, I think the big thing with this car that I'm taking away is... After I do these episodes, I'm going to evaluate the cars. I'm going to evaluate what I think of them. And kind of see if they're worth pursuing as a car in the future. Like, as a car that I would use for more time attacks. And this car, I actually think I might. Because it's a little bit... It's just a little bit different. I feel like if you showed up in an online race with this car, it'd be kind of one of those, like, huh, like, you'd look at it and you'd be like, huh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, and then you actually see him run, and it's kind of like, oh, holy crap, that guy's actually kind of quick, so I would actually recommend if you want something different, give this thing a shot, build one, see what you think, and if you guys want me to do more unlikely circuit builds, then let me know in the comment section below what you guys would like to see, because I would like to get this to be kind of a community-involved series, and see what we can get out of it, see what kind of cars we can get out of it, and, and see maybe if we find some hidden gems, who knows? But if you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed this uh, this episode, then don't forget to leave me a like. Tell me in the comment section down below what you guys thought of it. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to click that subscribe button for more. And I will see you guys in the next one. Talk to you guys later, and I hope you guys have an awesome day. See you guys in the next one.